A police officer and a bank official were shot dead by armed bank robbers in a shootout with police in Dar es Salaam, capital of Tanzania. It could be any city in the world, but it's still two more deaths because of illicit guns. Illicit guns kill about half a million people worldwide every year. Africa suffers most, and it's here where hundreds of thousands of illegal small arms and light weapons are in circulation. These weapons are cheap, portable and readily available. In a continent struggling with famine, corruption, disease and conflict, the abundant supply of illicit weapons is holding up development. This one is a military weapon, highly dangerous to the public. It can carry up more, uh, 30 rounds of ammunition. It fires more or less the same like AK-47, the same capabilities. It's a Makarov pistol. It's a Chinese made. They are plenty, plenty in our country. Plenty in our country. Tanzania has had a relatively peaceful history through colonial times and into the era of independence. Today, the rate of violent crime and exposure to armed conflict is low by comparison with other East African countries. Yet, recent official surveys suggested there were about 700,000 guns held by the civilian population. In some regions, it was reckoned that 24% of households held at least one firearm, particularly in border regions. Tanzania neighbours countries like Rwanda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo and other countries with a troubled history. Tanzania is not lucky enough to be an island. She's got nine neighbours. Of the nine neighbours, eight of them are, are or were in conflict at one point uh, in time. Some of them still are today. Tanzania is a peaceful country. We had to agree receiving refugees and these refugees came with firearms and some did not declare them. Tanzanians also have a cultural attachment to guns. Handcrafted, muzzle-loading guns have been used for ceremonial occasions since the 19th century here. Now, criminals are turning to local artisan gunsmiths for cheap and deadly weapons. This is a, is a modified shotgun, locally modified, and it has the capability of firing ammunition of a modern, uh, ammunition of a modern shotgun. For the last 50 years, the Great Lakes region of Africa has been at the centre of the proliferation of illegal guns. Illegal guns have fueled criminality and political instability and have crippled economic development here for decades. Peace and security is a precondition of development and growth. Once there is insecurity, there is a lack of production, there is a lack of movement of people, there is a lack of movement of goods, and there is a general sort of deterioration of the economic well-being of that community. On behalf of the Tanzania Police Force... In the year 2000, the countries of the Horn of Africa and Great Lakes regions signed a declaration in Nairobi to tackle the problem of small arms. The Nairobi Declaration and Protocol. In 2001, Tanzania embarked on a five-year national plan of action and set up an arms management and disarmament committee. The Tanzanian government are working with Safer Africa, disarmament specialists funded by the European Union. The action plan quickly identified the need for detailed record keeping and traceability of licensed firearms. While the previous paper records were diligently maintained, sheer volume meant it could take six months to trace the owner of a weapon found at a crime scene. A new computer-based system was put in place and about 10,000 records a month are currently being entered. All guns must now be registered. Owners have to bring their gun in person to the police station to have the make and model verified by a trained officer. Illicit firearms recovered are carefully managed in stockpiles, ready for destruction. While the ambition is to eliminate and destroy illegal weapons, the proper registration and licensing system will allow for legal gun ownership. A feeling of insecurity is common in many rural areas, and farmers want a gun to protect themselves and their property. He has been with his shotgun since 1975. Mm. I want my gun to take care of my herd of cattle and to protect them from thieves. I need it to take care of my other property on the farm. 
We live here with many problems. There are monkeys, wild pigs, lions that might attack my cattle in the corral, and hyenas. It is a common misconception internationally that you measure success by the number of firearms you have destroyed. So really, um, destroying or, or counting just numbers is, is not a game. What, what is important here is what, what have you done to stop the dysfunctions and prevent the dysfunctions from happening again. And that is how you should measure success in a disarmament program. The arms management and disarmament plan in Tanzania has had significant success across the country. It's the first comprehensive national approach anywhere in the world and is being offered as an example for the region. The government has recognised the need to work from the top down, from updating legislation, training police officers, to working with the public in tackling the problem. The civil society and law enforcement agencies are working together. Before it was not like that. The law enforcement agencies by themselves, they were not cooperating. Customs and police were different things. The police and the army were quarrelling. It was now it is together. They are working together. So this it took us years, but we have managed. We have established that sort of cooperation. To ensure public confidence remains high and that practical management and disarmament continues, public displays of gun destruction are held around the country using a mobile gun cruncher. If people have committed to giving up their gun for a safer society, they want an assurance that it will be destroyed. Before the disarmament program, Tanzanian authorities were recovering about 400 illegal guns a year, but annual seizures have now risen to over 1,600 weapons. The long-term success of this program will also depend on public awareness and support to rid society of the threat of small arms. In the region, the countries of the Great Lakes will have to address the proliferation and trafficking in small arms within their borders. And here's where the international community shares responsibility for making that happen. The European Union has seen the devastating impact of illicit small arms in developing countries. Its support for the disarmament work in Tanzania should help other countries recognise what's possible. Tanzania is an example, uh, not only on the African continent, but on the African continent by far in terms of what government and civil society can do together once they cooperate on a, on a common problem. On a continent where poverty reduction is a matter of life and death, progress must not be undermined by illicit guns. The international community can help with technical and financial aid, but also by a political commitment to make the link between security and development on the world stage. <laughs>